Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. We may need to start a new series called Keeping Up with Kanye West. I think one day we will all wake up and understand the inner workings of Kanye West and realize that all of his antics are for a reason. But unfortunately, today is not that day. Kanye West was once an influential person in hip hop, and he has slowly transcended into a polarizing figure, very similar to Joker in the Batman movie. One of Joker's quotes goes as this. He says, give a man a mask and he will become his true self. And yesterday, Kanye went viral once again for showing up in a gimp mask on the Alex Jones show and basically becoming his true self. Hi, and welcome back to Lovely TTV. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button down below. So Kanye West went viral once again. He did a three hour long interview with Alex Jones. I've watched half of it. I haven't watched the full three hours yet. I'm still trying to get through it. But basically, if you guys don't know, Alex Jones is a huge conspiracy theorist. Um, He built this brand over like the past 20 years. He's the one who was hit with the $900 million lawsuit about the Sandy Hook kids. Yes, that Alex Jones. So one of the most controversial things that came from his interview is that Ye basically got on the platform. He praised Hitler. He made anti-Semitic jokes. And he also says that, you know, he has a lot of love and respect for Jeffrey Dahmer and a bunch of other people people that most people don't really like so y'all go ahead and check this out that's right you're not hitler you're not a nazi you don't deserve to be called that and demonized well i i see i i see good things about hitler also the jew i love everyone and jewish people are not going to tell me you can love um you know us and you can love what we're doing to you with the contracts. And you can love what we're, you know, what we're pushing with the pornography. But this guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician, you can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good. And I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. All right, so you guys just watched that video and you guys heard him basically pray Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. He says, I like Hitler, I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis and I see good things in Hitler. Um, He claimed that Hitler invented highways, he invented microphones, and I guess as a rapper, the microphone is very important to you. But upon further research, I'm, I'm learning that Hitler did not invent either one of these things. So I don't know where Kanye got that, but they're saying that he didn't invent either thing. Now, what I do want to hit on is this. A lot of people are really upset about the anti-Semitism and the fact that, you know, once again, he's, you know, disrespecting the Jewish culture. I get that. You can be offended by that. That is your complete right. Um, But I want to go a different direction because that goes without saying, right? What I find very interesting is that Ye is sitting here praising the Nazis of Germany. But I wonder if Ye has done like real research on the Nazis and how they would have treated not only himself, but his biracial children. Um, What Kanye may not realize is that the Nazis were not only anti-Semitic, they were very racist and they had a deep hatred for race mixing and they had an even deeper hatred for children who were produced in an interracial marriage, okay? So let me break down some history to you guys. Hitler not only thought that black people were inferior, he also called them dirty. Um, There was a small pocket of black people, for whatever reason, they were in Germany, um, around the time that Hitler was ruling. And it was about 20,000 black people in this small colony called Reichland. And so compared to the 65 million, you know, white ethnic people in Germany, there was like 20,000. And so these people were there long before the Nazis took power. They were living there. And a lot of these people, they intermingled with the German women. So this population in Germany started creating a bunch of biracial children. 
And initially, you know, nobody really cared. It was like this small little colony of, you know, German women and African men. But once the Nazis took power in 1933, they began making laws, basically refusing to register any interracial marriages. They refused to acknowledge any children born of these marriages. They also promoted eugenics and they made these children, once they were school age, they would, you know, just literally bully and and hit them with propaganda saying that they were inferior due to their dual heritage, saying that because they were not full Aryan, they were, you know, basically subhuman. And then it gets even more sinister than that. In Hitler's 1925 book, Mein Kampf, he called these children the Rhineland Bastards. So any child that was born in the Rhineland area to a German mother and an African father, um, you know, the father may have been serving in the French military. He may have had a high rank. It didn't matter. He considered all of these children bastards, even if the parents were technically together, even though they couldn't get legally married. He said that black and white people having children together was a sin against God, he also stated that when you sleep with a black person, you're contaminating and infecting the gene pool with lower humanity. In 1937, Hitler approved forcible sterilization of approximately 500 biracial children. Okay? And this fact was kept hidden until 1979. And they, the people only found out about this because a German historian named Reimer Premier exposed the plot. Now, what's very interesting is that Kanye West does not have black children, no matter how much he wants to scream that his kids are black. Phenotypically, these are not black kids. These are biracial children. He's black. The mother's Armenian, okay? Now, if he would have had kids with Alexis, those kids would be black. His children are biracial. So I find it very interesting that he's saying he has all the love for the Nazis and, you know, the Nazis, they invented, you know, microphones and highways, but they hated biracial children. They would have called all your kids, okay, Northwest, St. Uh, Chicago, and some, they would have been considered Ryland bastards. Were they born in that time period in Germany? And not only that, your children, male and female, would have been sterilized. So I don't understand for the life of me why he's promoting this. Like I said, for me, I'm not Jewish. So it's not when they talk about anti-Semitism, it's not going to hit me like that because I'm not Jewish. Right. But I get why Jewish people are very upset. But I see a lot of black people being even more upset because of the anti-Semitism, which is 100 percent wrong. But I'm not seeing any black people even talking about how black people were treated during, you know, the Nazi rule in Germany. It wasn't just Jewish people who were sent to concentration camps and killed. There were many black people who were also killed in those same concentration camps, along with LGBT people, disabled people and gypsies. OK, so it's just I don't know where he was going with that. But for him to try and praise them like they're cool, I don't know if he's just trying to be edgy or, you know, he's just so mad because, you know, these the, the Jewish community, whatever, these high ranking Jewish people, you know, froze his bank account and took his money. So it's almost like the old saying, when a good girl's gone, she's gone forever. I'm feeling that might be what's going on with Kanye. You know, at one point in time, he had good intentions. He was a, you know, a dope charismatic person but I think it's the point where he feels like he's been pushed so far off the edge and y'all want to make me seem like a bully and a bad guy now I'm gonna go 10 times harder and be that villain that you guys keep portraying me to be because I feel like he's saying all this reckless shit to throw darts and to get under these people's skin but he doesn't understand that in the same breath while you're trying to get under their skin it makes you look silly as a black man that you're sitting here co-signing Nazi propaganda, you know what I'm saying, when they were killing black people too, and they would have sterilized all four of your biracial children, okay? So that's the history lesson for that ass. Now, moving on, what else I found very interesting is that I told you guys when I was doing my live stream yesterday or the day before yesterday about, you know, me going down the rabbit hole of the whole BDSM gimp culture that I had no idea about, and I kept saying that for Kanye to say that these celebrities are controlled because they're not speaking up against Balenciaga, I thought it was just disingenuous. I didn't take it as sincere because 
just a month ago, he was praising Demna on, on the Drunk Champs um, podcast. He was praising Demna. And I've and like I told you, I felt like he wasn't trying to really go at them or call them out because he still low key wants to be in those spaces. People thought I was reaching and oh, well, he can change. You know, he is, you know, low key calling them out. No, he's not. And now he's proven the point that I was saying in my stream and in my video when I talked about him, T.I. and Kim Kardashian. Um, yesterday, he took to social media and basically announced his support for Balenciaga. So after all the drama, all of the evidence that we have that they're basically pushing pedophilia, you know, even the police tape on the ground with the Bal, B-A-A-L, it's literally staring in your face. Bal was a demon, okay? Bal was considered a demon, and they were even sacrificing children to him. So again, like I said, Everything is hidden in plain sight and nothing is there by accident. Why would they purposely spell Balenciaga wrong? Okay. So they knew what they're doing. And for Kanye to be a Christian, it's just very weird to me that he's trying to co-sign this. So this is what he tweeted. He basically said the following. God loves Balenciaga. Love is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Praying for all of the innocent artists and beautiful humans who make clothing that had nothing to do with the ads. People's grandmothers work for their Christ's sake. Then he goes on to say, I stand by Balenciaga and I denounce all witch hunts and cancel, cancel culture. Jesus is king. Ending trafficking doesn't start or end with the fashion campaign for Christ's sakes. Then he goes on to say, the use of porn destroyed my family, but Jesus will heal everything. Then he says, remove any and all forms of pornography from Twitter and every platform. Pornography is a product of pedophilia. When grown men look at porn, they are watching someone's daughter relive trauma for money. So basically what I'm taking from that is that he's talking out of both sides of his neck. He's still trying to send dog whistles to Balenciaga that he still wants to be a part of them. He really enjoyed that brand. He loves his good friend Demna, you know, and he's really hurt that they cast him aside because of Ari Emanuel. But then he's trying to mix it with Christianity. But again, you can't serve two masters, Jay. Okay, you can't be sitting up here in a gimp mask, you know, saying one thing when we know what the gimp mask means now. Maybe we didn't know a week ago, but damn it, in the past 48 hours, I done learned some shit, okay? So you can't serve two masters. You can't say that, you know, child trafficking is wrong and, and porn is wrong. But then Balenciaga okayed. They okayed this ad. And they had multiple ads like this on their Instagram page before they took it down. They knew what they were doing. I don't consider it a mistake. Um, he then also went on to post a screenshot of his conversation with Demna. So I believe it's Kanye texting him and he's saying, what would you like me to say? Demna says, stop, Demna, hate, love. And then he says, love cures everything, love Demna. Then he says, Jesus loves everyone, God is love. And I think Demna replied back with the heart. Okay, Demna probably didn't want to say too much because he knows Kanye likes to, you know, blast people and show screenshots. But I find it very interesting that he's still wanting to, you know, have some type of association and showing some loyalty to Balenciaga when this same fashion house had no problem dropping him like a hot potato. As soon as they got the whistle from Ari Emanuel, they dropped him within 48 hours. But that was supposed to be his homeboy. But now... He's sitting here trying to cape for them. The same company that didn't, you know, give him any type of grace. They got rid of him because it was about money. And at the time, Kanye was bad for their brand. So now that they're, you know, getting their own quote unquote karma and being caught out, Kanye is running with this cape to try and protect this mega corporation. You know, and nobody, everybody shuts up about that. Nobody ever wants to talk. The same thing with like Valencia talking about the, the bondage with the kids. Are you going to convince... Uh, Kim to not wear the Balenci anymore because you know I, I think that not wearing certain brands is not going to solve trafficking any form of sex yeah. trafficking it's deeper than a logo on a brand it just so happens that um, that you know Balenciaga is being called out but I'm saying let's call that out let's call everything out yes let's, yeah. call, let's call it all out let's yeah. call it all out baby that's what we got to do call it all out 
So it, I don't know. It's just very, very disturbing to watch that play out. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling anything he said about Balenciaga. So as everybody's getting ready to wind down and, you know, go to bed, we did a nice little Zoom meeting yesterday. Um, so, you know, everybody's winding down, getting ready to go to bed. Kanye decides to, you know, get on Twitter and blast Chris Paul. This entire situation was a mess. So this is what Kanye says. Let's break one last window before we get out of here. I caught this guy with Kim. Good night. And he posts a picture of Chris Paul, who is married and has been married since 2011 and has two beautiful children. Um, so at this point in time, everybody is trending right now. Kanye's trending, Kim Kardashian, Chris Paul. Everybody's talking about this. Chris Paul is getting drugged. It is a mess right now. Kanye knew exactly what he was doing, okay? But that's not even what was, but that's not even the last of what happened last night. So then he gets back up. You know, he said he was going to bed, but I guess he couldn't sleep. Then he gets back up and he ends up posting this swastika like picture. And at that point, that was the final straw for Elon Musk. So basically, the image is a swastika inside the Star of David. Um, and it was blocked by Twitter for violation of rules. So then what he did, he went to go text Elon, basically asking, well, why was this removed? So he basically goes on to, you know, try and text Elon, like, you know, what is going on? And Elon replies back. This is around 1028 last night. He says, sorry, but you've gone too far. This is not love. And so, you know, he shows the picture that he sent to Elon and so then Kanye takes the conversation that he's having with Elon and um, he writes back and he says, yay, 24, love everyone, hashtag love speech. And he tells Elon, who made you the judge? That's what he had sent to Elon. So then Elon says, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Kanye says, in Jesus name. After that nice prayer <laughs> that, you know, Elon sent Kanye, he blocked him. He blocked him from Twitter outright. So I guess Kanye tried to log in and it says that, you know, he has been blocked. They've determined that, you know, he's violated Twitter's rules and he's blocked for the next, you know, 11 hours. So he shows all of these screenshots and then you see his account gets suspended. So as of now, he's completely suspended from Twitter it is a mess. Um, people were confronting Elon, like, why are you suspending him? You know, that this is not freedom of speech. And so Elon replies back and he says, just clarifying that his account is being suspended for incitement to violence, not an unflattering picture of me hosted by Ari. Frankly, I found the pic to be helpful motivation to lose weight. So Elon is standing by his decision. Um, you know, he replied that to Kanye West and Kim.com. This morning, the rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, at the center of a firestorm again, now banned from Twitter after more anti-Semitic comments and posts. West's account suspended Thursday night after he posted a now-deleted image of a swastika inside a Star of David. Twitter owner Elon Musk confirming West's suspension while replying to another Twitter user, writing, I tried my best. Despite that, he again violated our rule against incitement to violence. Account will be suspended. West's Twitter account has been restricted before over anti-Semitic comments, but he returned to the platform in November. Musk has said that the account was restored by Twitter before he took ownership. Earlier yesterday, during a lengthy interview with conspiracy theorist Alex Jones on his Infowars show, dressed in a full mask, West attacked Jewish people, spread more anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, and praised Nazis, also saying this. I see good things about Hitler also. When Jones says he didn't like Nazis, West interjected. I like Hitler. Jewish leaders have warned of heightened fears of anti-Semitic hate recently. West has been one of the most famous voices sharing anti-Semitic comments over the past few months, causing him to lose millions of dollars in lucrative partnerships. Now appearing on the Infowars program with white nationalist Nick Fuentes, both dined with former President Donald Trump just before Thanksgiving at his Mar-a-Lago club. Trump, who is also running for office in 2024, said he did not know who Fuentes was and that West expressed no anti-Semitism at the dinner. 
All right, see, I just saw that news clip. So like I said, everybody's talking about it. This is one of the top stories right now all over the internet. But I leave the question up with you guys. What do you guys think about this entire situation? What do you guys think about what Kanye West is doing out here? I mean, do you think he's doing all this on purpose? Is he trying to destroy the little bit of fame and notoriety that he has? Or do you feel like Kanye is just trying to poke the bear because he's upset because of everything he's gone through in the past month? Let me know your thoughts down below. Please make sure to share the video. Don't forget to thumbs up. Thank you once again for tuning in and supporting. Make sure you leave a comment down below, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.